Hello, first and second graders. Welcome to Sunday School. We're going to be doing lesson 11 today. So if you wanna get out your papers that go with the lesson. Okay, you, oh, that's my teacher plan. You don't need that one. Um, you have your Who Done It paper. And there's also a packet called Friends. And there's a Discovery packet as well. Okay. So get those out, especially this. We're gonna start in a few minutes with our story out of that one. But first, we're gonna go over a new memory verse, and then we have a mystery to solve today, and that's something we haven't done yet. So I'm hoping you will be able to see my papers really well, um, because I, I am not using a laptop where I can share the screen. Um, so I'm just gonna Try to move my cell phone close to the paper so that you can see it well, okay? Uh, let's start with our memory verse. So I'm gonna move you over to my board, okay? Let's see if you can see that, okay? For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2, verse 6. Let's say that together one more time. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2, verse 6. Okay, we'll come back to that in a little while. And I'm going to try to get this mystery paper as close to you as I can so that you can see what's going on and I will tell you a little bit about this story and then I'm going to read you some clues and we're going to try to work together and figure out this mystery. So let me let me get my paper together. Okay this morning when Mr. Meyer and his students came into their classroom they found the place a mess. Someone had splashed red poster paint all over Mr. Meyer's desk. They had strung strips of toilet paper from the lights and they had soaked the windows. The room had been in perfect condition the night before and only students had been in the room this morning. So Mr. Meyer knew someone in his class had made the mess. Mr. Meyer had the class take their seats. Then he asked for the guilty students to confess. Everyone looked amazed, but no one said anything. Mr. Meyer announced that if no one confessed in 10 minutes to soaping the windows, putting toilet paper around the room, and splashing red paint over everything, he would punish the whole class. Let's see if you and I can help keep the whole class from being punished. I'll read you some clues and we're gonna try to figure out who the guilty students are, okay? So, you may hear my dog in the background. He's sitting next to me and he's making some funny noises. I think he's trying to talk to all of you. I'll let you see him in a minute. So, clue number one. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to hold this clue close to the camera so you can see it. Let me get it upright. Um, okay. So, this clue is somebody's lunchbox. And do you see that it's red? And right by my finger at the bottom, you'll see a little white square or something. Guess what that is? That is a bar of soap. So I want you to look in the big picture and see if you can figure out whose desk might have a red lunchbox with a bar of soap. That is clue number one. Clue number two. Let's see. Clue number two, can you see that? What we're looking at there is somebody's, let's see, I'm not sure I'm holding it correctly. 
oh, it's somebody's yellow bag. And it looks like it has a paintbrush with red paint on it in the yellow bag. Can you look in that picture and see if you see somebody with a yellow bag? Hmm. Okay, clue number three. Here's a picture of somebody's desk. And inside that desk is a bar of soap. Do you see that white bar of soap inside the desk? And on the desk, it looks like there's a green book and something red as well. So we're gonna have to look in that picture and see if you can find a desk that has a green book with some papers and a red, I'm not sure, it might be an apple or something like that. Are you starting to see where some of these guilty students are? They could be the ones. Here's our next clue. This shows another desk and it has a bar of soap on the desk. This desk has a blue book and an orange book on it. And it's kind of hiding the soap from the teacher and has a pink bag underneath. So in our picture there, do you see the red book, the blue book, and a pink bag under the desk? That might be one of the guilty students. Here's another clue. Oh, in the back of somebody's pants pockets, I see just a little bit left on a roll of toilet paper. Do you see anybody in the picture that has these pants on? I do too, one of those guilty students. Oh, here's another picture of the inside of somebody's desk. So it's from the back of the room and you can see toilet paper stuffed inside their desk and they have a green book on top of it. Do you see a desk with a green book? Hmm. Clue number seven. Oh, this student is writing and has, if you look real close at it, the fingers, it looks like some red paint on those fingers. So maybe they washed their hands and didn't get all the paint off after they sprayed it around the room. And this person is holding a yellow pencil. Do you see anybody at one of those desks with a yellow pencil? And how about the last clue? Blue backpack, yellow shoes, and there's red paint on both. In our picture, do you see somebody with a blue backpack, yellow shoes, and there might be some paint on it that we just can't see because they don't have it facing the front of the room because they don't want the teacher to see it. Well, we're gonna come back to this at the end of our lesson and we're gonna see if we found out which students did this mess. Because really, would it have been wise to punish the whole class just because a few students did something bad? Has that ever happened to you at school? Could the innocent students in the class have figured out the mystery without the clue cards? Hmm, could they have used some wisdom and figured out and looked for clues themselves, like looked in glanced inside people's desks or on their fingers or on their shoes to see if there was any red paint? Well, sometimes we come up against mysteries or problems that need wisdom to be figured out. 
And when we're in the middle of a problem, it's not as fun as figuring out someone else's mystery. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the camera around so you're back to looking at me. Ooh, having a little bit of trouble here today with my camera, okay. And maybe you can even see Rango behind me. Oh no, can you see Rango? Rango, the kids are looking for you. Let's see. Well, there he is. Say hi, Rango. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to start with today's story, and then we'll come back to the mystery at the end. Grab this paper, and we are going to read it together, okay? And I'll hold the picture up there in case you don't have this at home so that you can see it while I read the story to you, okay? Is that good enough where you can see everything? Okay. King Solomon was a wise king. Many people came to him with their problems, seeking his advice. One day, two women came to him with a big problem. A guard followed them, carrying a baby. The first woman told this story. O oh, king, this woman and I live in the same house, just the two of us. I had a baby not long ago. Three days after my child was born, this woman had a baby. In the night, this woman's baby died. She secretly took my baby and left me her dead baby while I slept. When I woke up the next morning, I saw that the baby was dead, but I realized that it was her baby and she had taken mine. And what do you say, King Solomon asked the second woman. This baby is mine, the second woman cried. No, it's mine, the first woman yelled. The two women argued back and forth before the king. The problem called for wisdom. Let's turn the page and look at the next picture. Let's see what King Solomon does. Okay. Just a second. Here we go. Okay. There they are again, and there's the baby. Bring me a sword, King Solomon ordered. A guard quickly brought a sword. King Solomon pointed to the baby. Cut the baby in half, he said to the guard. Give one half to the first woman and the other half to the second woman. That should settle it. Can you imagine their shock at what the king was saying to cut the baby in half? The first woman said, please, King Solomon, don't kill the baby. Let that woman have him. And the second woman said, go ahead and kill him. Then neither of us will have a baby. King Solomon decided. He said to the guard, give the baby to the blank woman. She is his mother. Well, let's see how he figured that out. I'm gonna grab my Bible. And I'm going to read to you from 1 Kings 3, verse 27. And the Bible says, Then the king gave his ruling. Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is the mother. Wow. Did you figure that out too? Let's read the rest of it. When the Israelites heard what Solomon had decided, they were amazed at him. They knew that his wisdom came from God. So children, did you understand this story? We have one woman, well, they both had had babies, but the one woman, when her baby died, she put, like, put him in the crib of the other baby and took the one that was alive for herself. And King Solomon needed to figure out which woman actually had the baby that was living. Who did that baby belong to? Well, these women were fighting, saying, he's mine, he's mine, he's mine. 
And King Solomon had been given lots of wisdom from God. If you remember last week, when we were reading um, the story about King Solomon, and do you remember that he was David's son? Okay, he became king after David. So I wanted to go back and tell you a little bit about what we know about King Solomon. Um, let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Um, Solomon was one of David's sons. He became the king when he was a young man. God appeared to him in a dream and promised him anything he wanted. Solomon asked for wisdom. God was pleased and made him the wisest person who ever lived. So that was what we had learned last week. This week, we see that people are bringing their problems to King Solomon because he was so wise, okay? So these two women needed to figure out, well, they knew whose baby was who, but they were both saying to the king that the living baby was theirs because they both wanted a living baby. Um, so King Solomon, he had so much wisdom, he came up with this little test that he said he was gonna present to the women. And do you know what he did from that story? Do you remember? He said to the guard, what did he tell him? He said, get your sword and cut the baby in half and give half to each woman. Well, of course, children, you know that that's gonna kill the baby. But there's the first woman says to King Solomon, no, 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 don't cut the baby in half. Give him to the other woman. The other woman said, go ahead and do it. Then both babies will be dead. So how do you understand the story? How do you see Solomon's wisdom? Well, I think when you listen to the Bible verse, you could hear that the first woman was the one who really, that was her baby, okay? He said, give it to the first woman, it is her child. How did Solomon figure that out? Because that first woman, whose baby it was, when, when Solomon threatened to have the baby killed, she loved that baby so much, she was willing to give it to the other woman just as long as they didn't kill the baby. She would have given up her baby just to let it live. But the woman whose baby had died and who was being selfish and trying to get this woman's baby, she didn't show any love for this baby. She said, go ahead and kill the baby. Then they'll both be dead. So in all his wisdom, Solomon was able to figure out the first mother was the one who that baby really belonged to because she loved that baby so much she was willing to not let that baby die and to lose um, having that baby just to let it live. So I think that's a really neat story that showed how wise Solomon was and people were bringing their problems to him to solve. How does wisdom help us know what to do? Okay, well, it helps us to understand what people are saying or why they do what they do it helps us to know what is right and what is wrong. Wisdom can help us think up good plans and make good decisions. And it helps us to treat other people the way God wants us to treat them, okay? And God can give us wisdom too. We just need to remember to ask when we're unsure of what to do and we have a decision to make, we need to remember to ask God for wisdom. Okay, let's go back one more time to our Bible verse. Let me grab that. Okay, can you see the Bible verse on there? Okay, let's say it together. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2, verse 6. Okay. And we're going to go back to the story, and we're going to see if you figured out which people um, 
painted the room and toilet papered the room and just did a lot of damage with soap on the windows. So let's see. Okay, I'm gonna circle the ones who were the guilty students, okay? And we're gonna see if we can remember why. So in the top row, we had this boy. Okay, I'll circle him. He was guilty. Can you see that I put a circle around him? I know my pen is not very dark. He was guilty. He was the one with the yellow pencil. And we saw in our clue that the person holding the yellow pencil had paint all over his fingers, okay? It was still splattered on. We also had the clue with the purple, uh, the person with the blue striped pants that had a toilet paper roll in his back pocket. Did you see which student was that that was? Let's see, I think it was this one. If you look real close, you can see those blue striped pants, okay? How about this student right here in the middle. She was the one that had, I think it was the green book maybe. Hmm. And inside, yes, I think this was the one. Inside her desk, there was toilet paper, okay? We also had the student on the bottom left was guilty and I'm trying to remember, oh, I think that was the red lunchbox. You can see there's a red lunchbox and inside there was a bar of soap. Remember that one? Two more guilty students, or maybe one more. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four. Oh yes, I'm only missing one. And do you know which one was guilty, the last one? Yes, this one. This student, remember the red apple or ball and the green book? Well, we saw in that picture, um, and I can't find that clue at the moment. Oh, here it is. Um, there was soap in the desk of the student that had the red ball or apple and a green book and the pink bag underneath, okay? So good job in solving our mystery today. I'm glad you joined me for Sunday school. Let's take a moment and pray before we end, okay? Take a hand, take a hand, give a little clap. Take a hand, take a hand and fold them just like that. Would you close your eyes and bow your head with me? God, your wisdom helps us to know what to do when we have problems. Wisdom is something that you give to us when we ask for it, Lord. You also give us wisdom as we grow older and you help us to learn from wise people and you help us to gain wisdom as we study the Bible. So we pray, Lord, that you would just keep reminding us to ask you for wisdom, to study your Bible for wisdom, and to learn from wise people as we go through life and each day this week, Lord, may you give us the, the wisdom to make good decisions and to solve any problems we may have. Thank you, Jesus, for caring for us and for giving us wisdom. Amen. Thank you for joining me at Sunday School. I will see you next week. Have a great week. Bye.